Throughout history, human beings all over the globe have pondered what happens after we take our final breath. And one especially prevalent belief that transcends cultural and religious boundaries is the idea of being reunited with friends and family, with your loved ones. Rightly or wrongly, it's a concept that has been woven into the fabric of our species thought for centuries, stemming from religious doctrines, legend and folklore, and spiritual traditions. From today's most followed religion, Christianity, to the core beliefs in ancient Egyptian mythology, it's said and has been said that the deceased will meet again with whomever they've lost. Assuming, of course, that you don't end up in whichever version of hell or the underworld that your culture threatens. In general, however, we know that so much of what we tell ourselves about death is deeply rooted in the human psyche. At its simplest, mortality is a very difficult thing to come to terms with. And some argue that actually we never fully accept or understand it. Terror management theory says that really everything we do is in some way influenced by our underlying realization that we will one day die. And the curious balance between the inevitability but also unpredictability of our own looming demise is what guides all of our thoughts and decisions. In this case, it's specifically why it's so widely said that we will be reunited with loved ones in the ever after. It's a thought that offers comfort and hope in the face of mortality, no matter which religion, story, or theory is presenting it. It's an idea that provides solace and assures everyone that the bonds forged in life will persist beyond the physical realm. But of course, as everyone alive right now is, well, alive, the classic sticking point in all life after death conversations is that no one has empirical, testable proof of what awaits. As obvious as it is to say, no one alive right now is dead. And while there are many who've survived major scares, including long periods of time when their heartbeat has flatlined, it's a plain fact that anyone offering any kind of theory, recollection, or depiction of the afterlife has first and foremost lived to tell the tale. Religions preach the need for faith. Many legends depend on the acceptance of otherworldly or spiritual conditions. But in the cold, hard light of the scientific day, the afterlife is incredibly, inescapably hazy. It's little wonder then that society has come to be so fascinated by near-death experiences or NDEs. These are profound, often transformative episodes that occur when individuals are on the brink of death or have clinically died before being resuscitated. And while the scientific community remains divided on the interpretation of NDEs, they undeniably offer intriguing insights and in some cases, they seemingly add a great deal to this overriding notion of reuniting with those you love. One of the most well-known cases of an NDE that seemingly involved just such a reunion was that of Betty J. Edie. In her 1992 book, Embraced by the Light, Edie recounts her experience of dying during surgery, only to be somewhat miraculously brought back around a short while afterwards. In the intervening period, however, Edie claims to have had a profound experience that would remain imprinted in her mind from that point forward. And one of the key aspects of what she says happened to her is that she met deceased family members in a setting variously described as being bathed in a radiant, loving light. Her vivid descriptions of the afterlife and the emotional reunion with loved ones resonated with many readers back in the early 90s. And Edie's story is still widely cited as one of the most convincing of its type to date. Next, and to the neurosurgeon Eben Alexander, who chronicled another compelling NDE case in his 2012 book, Proof of Heaven. Here, while Alexander claims to have always been a man of science, he says that his views were wholly changed after he contracted a rare form of meningitis, was placed into a days-long coma with seemingly little chance of survival, but was ultimately able to pull through. Whilst in the coma and heavily monitored by doctors, Alexander says that he journeyed to an angelic realm with music and light and euphoria all around. What sets his story apart, however, is that he encountered one particular figure there, a woman who reportedly rode on the wings of a butterfly and was a guardian for him while he was in this other place. What's strange, though, is that shortly after Alexander came out of this coma in the here and now, he was sent a photograph from his estranged biological family, who he had been trying to meet in the weeks and months before he was suddenly taken ill. The photograph was of his biological sister, Betsy, who had died years beforehand and whom Alexander had, as a result, never met. 
Except he had met her. Because according to him, it was actually Betsy who he had seen in the heaven he had visited, riding the butterfly and helping him through. But finally, to the often cited story of one Pam Reynolds, whose NDE occurred while she was having major brain surgery in 1991. Reynolds had been admitted to a hospital following the discovery of a large aneurysm in an extremely difficult location, close to her brain stem. Her chances of survival were deemed to be very low, but she nevertheless underwent a rare and radical operation which involved, among other things, dramatically reducing her body temperature, putting her through an induced cardiac arrest, and draining the blood from her head. Ultimately, and as difficult a procedure as it was, it was a success. But when Reynolds came around, she was able to recall certain aspects of what had happened to her that astounded her doctors. She claimed to have been taken out of her body during the hours-long operation, which meant that she had been able to see the various instruments that were being used on her. She also reported having heard conversations that were taking place around the operating table, all while she was clinically dead, given the dramatic extent of her hospital treatment. Finally, though, and after some time, Reynolds claimed to have also seen people while she was out, including her grandmother and uncle, with her uncle reportedly eventually leading her back to her body to wake up. So what's your verdict on the Pam Reynolds case and also on those of Betty Eady and Eben Alexander? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. All three have certainly come to be seen as key moments in the ever-lengthening history of near-death experiences, not least because it's claimed within all of them that there is some kind of post-death connection with those you know and love. But of course, it's still true that, given the nature of mortality, science simply cannot offer up any kind of empirical evidence. It remains a hugely complex cultural matter. Whether through shared narratives or personal experiences, ideas on the afterlife and of a fated reunification clearly persist, offering a glimmer of hope in the face of the unknown. But as science and spirituality continue to dance right along the edges of this one final mystery, the question remains open. Open to interpretation, to contemplation, to ongoing discussion, and all while humankind continually strives for a deeper understanding of the true nature of life, death, and what may lie beyond.